I'm Warwick. Nice to meet you guys. And thanks again for having me. As I um, go through, let's um, quickly go over what we're going to go over today. First up, we're going to focus on the foundational step, which a lot of people get wrong, finding a winning product to sell. I'm going to explain more about why that is the place to start. Then deciding on a CMS, like which e-commerce website platform are you going to be building your website on? I mean, there's again, a lot of confusion in this space. So I'm going to just clear this up, make it easy for you guys. Next up, we're going to talk about taking payments online. Like, do you need to be registered as a business? Do you need to be VAT registered? Like, what is the deal? How can you do it? How long does it take? All of that and more. I'm going to make it real simple for you. Number four is the exciting part, like making some money online. How do we get our first couple sales? And then where do we go from there? Delivering the orders and so much more. There's going to be a lot of golden tips um, weaved into today's presentation. And um, I hope you've got your notepad ready because you're going to need to take a lot of notes and, um, and you also want to, at this stage, put your phone out of reach, close down the other websites, uh, tabs on your computer. If you're watching on your computer, remove your distractions because you made a decision to come here and to learn something about e-commerce. And I commit to share that information with you right now, but your part of the, of the steal is to stay tuned in, to focus, to avoid distractions. So go ahead and put your phone out of reach, shut down the other stuff on your computer and let's dive into it by staying focused with me. So let's go in by talking a little bit, just by prefacing like who I am and um, and why I can share some good information here because e-commerce really has changed my life and my business. It's allowed me and my wife to do cool stuff like take a few months and cycle around Africa. We did that for charity. It also gives me the time and the flexibility to do what I love, mountain biking, trail running, bird watching. Yes, bird watching, don't judge. But uh, there's a lot of hobbies that I love to do. And now I have the time and the flexibility to do that. It's also allowed us to have cool experiences like traveling the world and seeing gorillas. And like now, um, for the last two years, we've been living on a game reserve near Kruger, which is really cool. And this is all because of working online and selling on the internet. And I'm going to share, you guys, share my best tips with you guys on how to do just that. Now, a quick recap. And Ashley already touched on this stuff. So... I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but the short version of my story is that I started selling online nearly two decades ago. Now, in internet years, that's almost like a full lifetime. Over that time, I've done over 100 million rand in online sales right here in South Africa, and I've won multiple business awards doing that. I've built and sold e-commerce businesses, and for the last five years, I have dedicated myself to teaching others how to get started, how to get going, and how to achieve major success. And I'm very pleased to say that some of my students who started with no website, no product, no e-commerce skills have gone on to sell way more than I ever did online. And that really makes me super proud. I've had the privilege of teaching thousands of students. I have uh, some of the best training available. In fact, my premium training was selected by Shopify as one of only 12 programs in the world to be accredited by Shopify as a, an official education program. In 2021, Shopify also selected me as being the top e-commerce educator in the world. So I'm sharing this stuff, not to brag, but rather to, share, to, to let you know that you are in the right place. And this stuff I'm going to share with you, this works. It worked for me, it works for my students, and it will work for you. So the Insark e-commerce academy, this is my focus right now. And our focus and our vision is to help over 100,000 entrepreneurs to start and grow their own online businesses. And we I'm very pleased to say, are well on the way to helping over 100,000 people um, and more. The why is because I really believe that growing e-commerce is crucial to uplifting our beautiful country and because it's the easiest and the least risky stepping stone into entrepreneurship and it's entrepreneurship that will create new jobs and raise up the economy. I love saying that time and time again. And I love that you join me here today because what you're listening to is helping me achieve my vision and my why. So, how are we going? Uh, how are we growing in e-commerce, or how are we? How I am growing e-commerce? Things like giving lectures to the MBA students at Bits. Um, I'm on the board, for, or I have. I've actually just stepped down, but I was on the board for the e-commerce forum of Africa for three years. I uh, am an author for the Entrepreneur Magazine. I also actually literally wrote the textbook for for Unisa on e-commerce. I speak at all the big events, um, top educator in the world, and founded the Insight e-commerce academy. And now, as you can kind of pick up, I'm absolutely obsessed with helping entrepreneurs to grow online businesses. That's what I'm doing here today. And it's why I'm always sending out surveys and asking people what you want to learn more about. Like, what's your biggest challenge with selling online? 
And one of the biggest challenges that comes up every single time is that it's really difficult to get started. And how would we even get started in the first place? Well, if that's on your mind, then you're in the right place. So without any more um, going back and forth, let's jump straight in. These are the five key points we're going to dive into right now. And we're going to start with finding the right products to sell. And the reason, before I get into the details here, the reason that this is so important is because you could have the most beautiful website in the entire world. You could have tons and tons of people visiting that website, but if you don't have products that are suitable to being sold online, and if you don't have products that are priced right and in demand, then you're not going anywhere. You're dead in the water. And so it's so important that you understand the criteria for what a winning product looks like, and you know which products are going to sell well online because you've got to get the step right. So first up, um, a great tip for me to share with you is if you can sell something online that has a recurring purchase. For instance, yesterday, a, a, a lorry arrived at my place and, um, and dropped off a few bags of dog food. And I've been buying dog food online on a recurring purchase for years and years. I think I put my credit card in once like many years ago. And every few weeks, it debits my card, dog food arrives. I'm happy. The company is happy. They are good to go. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sell a subscription type product, but you can also sell something like, um, for instance, I, uh, I think I still hold the record for selling the most GoPro cameras out of any company in the country. And uh, with the GoPro cameras, we would sell the camera, but the recurring purchase would hopefully be the next model up when that one launches, but also the accessories and the extras and the spares and all the other stuff that we could sell to that customer to get them buying from us time and time again. The second thing to consider is that when it comes to selling online, size does matter. You can imagine that it's a, it's a totally different ball game if you are selling fridges and couches versus uh, small box electronics. And this works in a couple of different ways. In terms of the shipping, if you're importing, it's expensive to ship uh, couches and fridges, but uh, moving small boxes around is way cheaper. Also the delivery from your warehouse or from you to the customer it's expensive to deliver big stuff and slow, whereas small stuff, quick and easy and cheap. The other factor to consider is warehousing. Like if you are selling fridges and you're working out of your house, where are you going to put them? You've only got so much space, right? So uh, again, selling small boxes means that it's easier to, to kind of store them. And even as you are looking to expand out into warehouses or having a stock room, you can certainly fit way more small boxes into that room than bigger boxes. Let's talk about import duties and local regulations, compliance stuff. This is the boring stuff. This is not very entrepreneurial, but we need to consider this when considering what products we're going to be selling. Especially, and this, this plays a big role when you're importing, obviously. If you aren't the one importing the products, then you don't have to worry about this at all. But if you are looking on Alibaba or other uh, international sellers, suppliers, then you definitely want to, to consider this. Like, what is the import duty? And this is really crucial. Because when you are importing something, there's a duty that you pay when it comes through the through customs. And that duty could be 0%, which is great. It could also be 45%, which is not great. And you can imagine that if you don't pay attention to this upfront, then you could be in for a scary surprise when your products arrive at uh, customs and you get a big invoice from them. So you 100% want to know this upfront. The other side is local regulations and compliance. Like if you are selling uh, children's toys, do they need to be compliant? Is there some sort of certification? Is there registration around that product? I know for sure when I was the, uh, my company at the one stage was the importer for DJI drones, you know, all those fancy drones that fly around and every single model of drone that would, was released, we couldn't legally uh, sell that product until we had an ACASA certification. Now getting an ACASA certification, oh my goodness, we can do a whole webinar just on that topic. But it was a lot of work, very complicated, and cost a lot of money. And that we had to do for every new model of drone that came out. So we had to do that, but it was worthwhile. Now, if you're thinking about importing a product, you need to know what regulations and compliance might be required for you to legally sell that product. So again, just a criteria for considering which products to sell. The other thing, support and returns. And this is something that people um, need to think about before you get started. Now, some products have a lot of support. And this can be a good thing or a bad thing. And it depends on the business that you want to start up. Because if you're looking for a laptop uh, lifestyle kind of business where you don't have much involvement, then you certainly shouldn't be looking at selling a product that has a lot of support. And support can be after the sale. It can also be lots of questions before the sale. 
if you're selling drones, I can tell you up front, this is for free, um, that there's a lot of support. Before somebody makes a purchase, they're going to ask questions. After they make a purchase, they're going to ask questions. So if you are looking for a laptop lifestyle, sitting on the beach, sitting, sipping mojitos kind of business, then go for low support products. But if you are going to be kind of setting this up and, and have the time and capacity, then actually a little nice tip here is that leaning into customer support can be a competitive advantage. You see, people chose to shop with my company because we had the advice. Like when somebody had questions about the drone that they wanted to buy, I had a team of guys who were trained up and excellent and knowledgeable. And we could answer those people's questions and we could close the sale. So that for me was a core competency. And, um, and you could kind of treat that either way, but it depends on the business you want to set up. The same thing goes for returns and kind of all the same reasons. So definitely consider those two points. Now margins, margins and demand. Oh my goodness. Margin, profit margin, having money for yourself at the end of the month. Sometimes entrepreneurs don't focus on this. They just focus on sales, but margin profit is what drives a business. And as business owners, as business leaders, as entrepreneurs, we owe it to ourselves to make money. This isn't a selfish thing. This isn't about kind of getting the Ferrari. This is about having the profit that you can reinvest in the business and you can pay your staff. You can hire the staff in the first place. Without profit, you don't have a business. So you've got to sell products that have high margins. If I look at any product, if it's got less than 25% gross profit margin, I'm not interested. Unless, unless if it's like an Apple tablet or something where you just know it's going to fly off the shelves. But most of the time, that's not the case. So we need to look at products that have high margins. And this is even more important when you're starting out because having high profit margins and having cash in the bank gives you a safety net for when you make mistakes. I'm not saying if you make mistakes, I'm saying when you make mistakes, you are going to make mistakes and you are going to lose money. And it's not amazing. It sucks. But the thing is that everybody, it's, it's a learning curve that everybody goes on. Now, as part of Insaka, my, my job is to help our students to avoid making the same mistakes that I know that they're going to make. So that's what I am here to kind of coach you guys right now and our premium students through kind of avoiding the mistakes that I made. I paid the school fees so that you guys don't have to. Of course, demand goes without saying, you don't want to sell something that's not in demand. And uh, I'm going to share a great tip with you guys. Write this one down. An action, an action item for you guys to do in terms of identifying demand is to use some, some free tools available from Google. Now, the one I've written there, Google Keyword Planner, that one is, is very sophisticated and very amazing because you can uh, predict the demand for a product that you're thinking of selling before you start selling it. Isn't that amazing? Like if you're thinking about selling this sort of gizmo, you can actually use this tool to determine how many sales you're going to get before you take your hard-earned money and go and buy the gizmo, which is really cool. But, um, and I'm saying but because the Google Keyword Planner isn't available to everybody unless you have a Google Ads account and you are actually running ads on that account. So as a alternative, you can also write down Google Trends. Google Trends is free and easy to access. And you can go to that website, um, not right now, after this webinar. And you, can, um, and you can type in the name of your gizmo, the name of your product, and you can see how many people in South Africa or whichever territory, how many people are searching for that term online in the last 30 days or year. And of course, it's important that people are searching for this product because we're selling it online, right? So if nobody's searching for the product, then it's going to be hard to sell. Now, I mean, at the risk of going off on massive tangents, of course, we can be the first to market, but then um, if there's nobody currently searching for it, then we need to create the marketing to create that demand and the awareness to then get sales. It's much easier to take a product and sell it online if people are actively looking for that. And you can use Keyword Planner and Google Trends to determine the potential demand for you. So let's take a look at choosing the right CMS, like which e-commerce platform is right for you? Because there are a lot of them. There's way more than what I'm going to show you on the screen here. There's actually 300, in fact, more than 300 different companies right now who advertise themselves to you as being the ultimate e-commerce platform for you to choose to start your business on. And when you're starting out, they actually aren't wrong. They're all right. Because when you're starting out, you have different questions and different requirements than what you will need in a few months' time. But that's important. And those requirements, like when you're starting out, Basically, what we're looking for is a website platform where we can upload our products, where we can take payments, and yeah, that's about it. Oh, and the price. You know, price is always important. So is it how expensive is it? But the thing is that that's, that's a criteria that you're thinking about when you're starting out, but that's not the criteria that you need to make your decision on because later on, when your business grows, 
you're going to have different requirements. And if you choose the wrong platform now, then you're going to have to change later on or your business just remains limited by the tech that you chose. And so my recommendation absolutely is WordPress or Shopify. Now, WordPress and WooCommerce, they go together and Shopify is another platform. Um, if you are, there, there's like a little asterisk that I need to add here is that if you are a major big company with very deep pockets and you need to customize the heck out of your website into exactly what you need, then you could consider Magento. Um, I have gone down that route. I have paid them a lot of money and I've tossed it in a bin. But um, my recommendations for anybody starting up any entrepreneur, any startup, any SME, any high growth company, you want to be looking at WordPress or Shopify. And the reasons that I suggest these is beyond being able to upload your products, being able to take payments in RANDs and beyond the pricing factors. These two options have more. They have what you need in a few months time. They will allow you to grow your business into the business that you want to grow. Like, let me give you some examples. These two are integrated into all of the tech options that you need when you're building a business in South Africa. So they can integrate into the warehouses. They can integrate into the careers. Well, they are integrated into the careers. They will integrate into all the accounting options that you're probably going to need later on. They also have the functionality that you can add to your site beyond just uploading a product. Because in a few months time, you might say, well, I actually want to add a loyalty program. How do I do that? If you're on another platform, and they don't have a large selection of apps or plugins, then the only option you have is to change platforms or to pay somebody to custom build it for you. Whereas with WordPress and Shopify, they have the WordPress plugins and they have Shopify apps. And those are just thousands of different uh, functionality apps and plugins, which you can add to your site at either no cost or a, or a small cost. You certainly don't have to pay a developer to go and build you a loyalty program because you can just go and browse the programs that are already created and you can just add it to your site. And that's super important, but you'll only know the importance of that later on um, as you grow. So that's why we're looking at these two. But also let's talk about support and community. If you're using an unknown platform that doesn't have a lot of users here in South Africa, then who are you gonna go to for support, for questions? Like, do you, you have to hire an agency to help fix it or to answer your questions? Whereas if you're using WordPress and Shopify, there are thousands, thousands of people in South Africa using it and you can absolutely go and ask them for help. Um, you've also got lo loads and loads of developers who are super um, up to speed and they, they, they live and breathe these, these platforms. So that you've got loads of help options. Of course, at Insaka, we have our Insaka community on Facebook, which is absolutely free for you to join. There's 36,000 people in that group already. So if you're using WordPress or Shopify and you've got a question, you go there, you post your question, you get the answer within moments. So this is why you want to be choosing one of these two platforms. And just in terms of the question that you might be asking yourself as well, Warwick, which one is right for me? The answer to that depends. It depends on a few factors. Now, if I were sitting with you one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be able to kind of look at which is exactly right for you. But basically... The key takeaways or the key differences is that WordPress, let's start with the pricing. WordPress is free. Shopify is not. It's $25 a month. Now, with WordPress, so WordPress is like this open source platform that nobody owns, which is awesome. But the thing is that because nobody owns it, there is no company, there is no staff, there's no support. Well, there is staff, but they, they don't offer you any support. With Shopify, the payment that you're making gives you access to support gurus. You can have a live chat with somebody right now, and they can look at your website. They can help you. So the support is often very helpful, especially when you're starting out. The other difference is that, which, let me start here, Shopify, super easy. Oh my gosh. If you can upload a photograph to Facebook, you can upload a product to Shopify. The user interface is so beautiful. It's so easy. Um, every year I do this five-day challenge where over five days and 30 minutes a day, I show people how to build their own Shopify site. And by the end of it, over just 30 minutes of five days, so it's like two and a half hours, people are like blown away. Their jaws on their floor and how easy it is to use. Now, I could never do that training with WordPress because it's really complicated. And the user interface is not super easy to, for people to figure out. So the learning curve with Shopify is way quicker. And ultimately, there's so many different different uh, other differences. But um, if you are able to pay for Shopify, then I strongly recommend it. I, I've used both many times as well as lots of different platforms. But if I'm moving forward, all of my businesses will be on Shopify. And that's for sure. So let's... um continue into payments because now at this stage let's assume we found a product we've got a winner we know we're going to sell lots of this product online um, and actually i forgot to mention 
if you don't have products, um, I have got a list of suppliers that I make available for free. So if you write down in sarka.coza forward slash suppliers, then that's a, a, just go to that link and you can get a free list of about 100 local suppliers who all of them have said that they're willing to work with you guys straight away. So if you're looking for products to sell, go to that list in sarka.coza forward slash suppliers and you will be able to get that list for free. So that's going to help you get products. So now, now that you've got products and you've chosen a website platform to build on, the next thing is like, well, how am I going to take payments? How am I going to get some money online? And the thing is that the world is a different place from when I first started selling online long before 2010. But when I started one of my stores in 2010, in order for me to take credit card payments, it took me three months, three months, three months before I could take a credit card payment on my website. And I'm not going to go into the rigmarole and the red tape that I had to go through back then. But nowadays, the good news is that it's super, super easy. In fact, you can start taking payments online really quick. The instant ability to receive payments can be done by piggybacking on a payment gateway. You see, back in 2010, I had to basically create my own payment gateway to be able to receive payments. Now, other companies, these payment gateways, you're probably familiar with them, Yoko, um, the online version of Yoko payment gateway. Payfast, Paygate, Paystack, Peach Payments, Ecorca, and all these others, they let you register an account and you effectively piggyback on their merchant account so that you can take payments through their system on your website. Basically, what that means is that when a consumer buys something off your site, they actually don't effectively pay you straight away. They pay the payment company. And that payment company releases the money to you a day or two later. So it's really quick and easy to do. And also some really good news, is that if you are starting out and you want to try e-commerce, but you don't want to go and register a business, then it's no problem at all. Because you can absolutely go and register a payment gateway without having a business, without being VAT registered, without having a company um, business, bank account or anything like that. You can go and register a payment gateway account with any of these payment companies that I've mentioned, Yoko, Paystack, Payfast, any of these. And, um, and you can do so using your own bank account. Because, of course, they've got some FICA uh, approval stuff. It's, it's, on, it's because you're taking people's money, so they need to FICA approve you. But if you don't have a business, you can use the FICA approval with your own bank account, your own proof of address, and your own ID book. So it makes it super, super easy. And this also means that we can get started really, really quick without having to kind of jump through hoops. It's a really cool way to get your feet wet, to start your business, right? And as I said in the beginning on one of the first slides, I really do believe that starting an online store is the easiest and the least risky business for you to start. And one of those reasons is because you can start like super quickly. You could be up and running this afternoon. If you and I sat together within half an hour, I can build your website. We can get your account set up and you can actually start taking payments like super, super quick. So your entrepreneurial journey, you're in the game. You obviously like you can't, there's that old saying like you can't catch a fish if you don't have a line in the water. And an entrepreneur can't make money if you don't have a business. And having a website is your online business. So it makes it super, super easy. Now, the first action item I want to share with you here, because I've got two here, is to go and register an account with one of these payment gateways. Yoko, Payfast, Paygate, Paystack, any of them. They're all amazing and they're all super easy to work with. The second thing is to turn on your website. Because at this stage, if you think about it, if you really think about it, we've got a product, right? We've got something to sell. We have a website that, uh, that is ready set up, theoretically. And now we've got a method to take payments online. We can take people's money. So why don't we just go ahead and turn on our website? Because as entrepreneurs, we owe it to ourselves to take action. We owe it to ourselves to put our product and our offering in front of customers as soon as possible. And the reason for that is because if we have a lemon, like if we found the wrong product, if, we, if it's a product that's never going to sell, then would you rather wait months and months to launch your business when your website is perfect and everything's sorted out and you've registered a bank account and you've got all these things, or would you rather put your product offering in front of the market right now and figure out that you've got a lemon? Because finding out that you've got a lemon, that's not great, but it means that you can pivot, you can adjust and you can change now without investing months of hard work into that. The other thing that might happen is that you realize that you don't have a lemon. You've got, what's the opposite of a lemon? A slice of cake, a cookie, I don't know. But you got something that's going to sell like hotcakes. Hotcakes, that's what we can use. So we don't have lemons, we've got hotcakes. And they are flying off the shelves. And if we realize that, 
again, we want to we want to get this information and this feedback from customers as quick as we can, so that we can say, hey, we got Hotcakes. This is a working business. Let's invest more. Let's get more stock. Let's grow this business and let's go and make some money, which is awesome. So that brings us to step number four, which is about getting those first sales. And now first sales, well, let's start like at launch. Like you've turned on your website. What can we do straight away to get some sales, right? Well, the first thing I'm going to share with you is nothing, uh, nothing um, too sophisticated, but definitely go to your friends and family and sell to them. Now, this isn't just some measly old tip that I pulled um, out of the air, but rather selling to your friends and family is important in the beginning because it lets you test your systems. When you get those first online orders, you need to figure out what to do with them. Like, hey, was that order actually paid? Um, do we dispatch it? Who do we dispatch it with? Which courier are we going to use? Um, how do you book a courier? How, uh, how do you box it? How do you package it? Did the courier arrive? Like, what's the tracking information? There's a lot of questions that you need to figure out. And in all honesty, you might mess up the first one or two orders. And if those first one or two orders are to your first um, few legitimate customers, then you might just get bad reviews or get a bad customer experience and you've lost that customer in the future. Whereas if you're sending a parcel through to your family or to your friends, and it arrives and it's not the right product or something gets messed up, then they aren't going to hold you too accountable. Um, they're there to support you. Um, ask them, sell to your friends and family. It's a good way to get started and to test, test the waters. Another easy way is to use your social reach leverage. If you've got friends on uh, Instagram, followers, if you've got people on Twitter, if you've got friends on Facebook, like publish it there. Like Get any opportunity make use of any opportunity to share your link to your website to get people on your site because traffic is important. Without traffic, you're not going to get sales. And I'm going to get back to that in a second. You can also, in the beginning, sell your products in person. So actually go to a flea market or go to a, an event. And this, you might be saying, well, these are not e-commerce tips, but this is important stuff. This is how we learn. Because when you are selling online, it's really hard to get feedback from customers um, who aren't engaging with you face-to-face. Whereas if you're standing at a flea market and somebody's looking at the product and they're asking you questions and they're holding the product and one of two things is going to happen, either they, they put it down, they walk away or they pull out their credit card and they buy it. And in both those situations, we need to pay attention to why that happened. Like why did the person who didn't buy, why didn't they buy? Did I not answer their questions appropriately? Is there a different product that, that they mentioned? Is it, um, is it the pricing? Like what's going on? Or if they did buy, like what led them to make that purchase? And though that information, we can take that back to our website and we can update our product pages and we can do so much better after having learned from that, that person-to-person engagement. It's also just a really good way to get sales, um, selling at these markets. Um, and then, of course, marketplaces. Like, let's talk about take lot. Let's talk about Amazon. Let's talk about Loot and uh, Macro Marketplace or Leroy Merlin or any other marketplace where you can list your products and get it in front of millions of people straight away. Now, I'm a big fan of having your own website and then leveraging marketplaces to get extra exposure and to get extra sales, but I am not a big fan of people just focusing on marketplaces because when you do that, you are building your business in somebody else's playground. They can change the rules, they can adjust, they can close your accounts. As we've seen with TakeLot, they've recently just made a lot of big changes to the way that their sellers uh, manage inbound inventory and it's really um, hurt a lot of people. And so the real best strategy is to have your own website and to then leverage marketplaces from there. But it's a really good way and a good thing to do when you are starting out because you can get those first couple sales. You can make some cash. But of course, the, the marketplace will take a sizable chunk of your profit, but you can start getting some products moving, start making some sales. So it is fantastic. So let's continue in this discussion of getting your first sales because you can't get sales without traffic. And there's two types of traffic that you can get, organic or paid. So let's talk about organic. Now, search engine optimization is how you bring organic traffic to your website. And this is free traffic. So when we're talking about SEO, the, these two words just sum it up entirely. If you're thinking about creating optimized content to bring free traffic to your site, then you need to be creating content which is both relevant and that your website has authority in the space that you're focusing on. Because if you're writing irrelevant content, it just confuses the Google bots and they don't know what your website's all about. So the content has to be relevant. And then of course, authority. Now authority is tricky to build when you're in the beginning because ideally you need backlinks from websites that are bigger in the industry 
they have more authority. When they link to you, the authority is transferred. But there's some creative ways that you can do this. If there are some big websites in your industry that, um, that you could possibly write guest blogs for, I think that's my next point here, then you can absolutely write some content, give it to a bigger website, and they post it with a link back to your site. Now, just to bring this back home and to explain that I do, uh, I do practice what I preach, earlier on, I said that I'm an author for the Entrepreneur Magazine. And uh, that sounds cool to say, but in all honesty, I did that because of the fact that every article that is published on the entrepreneur.com website from us comes with a URL, a link back to our website, which means that, um, that, they that you know, that's obviously a massively high-ranking website, which is now linking back to our website, which is amazing. So happy, happy days. The next thing to talk about here is um, an easy one, quick low-hanging fruit type of tip is to list your website or your business on Biz Community. Now, Biz Community is free to list. And, um, and this is all about getting a high authority backlink to your site. And it gets you a bit of ex extra exposure, but importantly, it increases the ranking of your site organically because you've got that link from a high ranking site. And as an ac action item, at this stage, once your website is live, my suggestion to you is to, as soon as possible, go and register your Google business account. Because this is free to do, it creates a listing for you on Google. Um, and you might've seen this, like if you have Googled companies like Startwise or in Saka or Take a Lot in the past, then when you Google something, you probably see that on the right-hand side of the page, so the left-hand side is all the normal Google listings, like one, two, and three. But on the right-hand side is what they call the knowledge panel. That's where you find like the map to get directions. You find their contact number, their opening hours. You see their reviews, some images, and all this cool stuff. That's what happens when you register your business on Google Business. And you can do that. It's free. And the reason I'm suggesting it here is because Google loves content that's created in its own ecosystem. So when you create a profile on Google Business, it is content inside of its own ecosystem and it will immediately rank your website higher because, because you're playing their game. And, um, and it also gives you an opportunity to start gathering reviews for your website, for your business, because those reviews are crucial to getting other customers to trust your business in the future. And again, I practice what I preach in soccer. We've got over 350 or somewhere around there, positive five-star reviews, which is amazing because if somebody doesn't know in soccer or doesn't know who we are and they are considering buying from us or joining our, our advanced e-commerce training program, then they might go to our Google profile. They're probably going to Google us. They're going to go and read our reviews. And when somebody sees like 300 or more positive five-star reviews, they are going to be more likely to join us, to buy from us, and to, to take part in our premium advanced uh, e-commerce training. And that's amazing. So definitely go and register your Google business listing. Let's continue this conversation. I said that there's two ways to get traffic, organic and paid. So let's spend a few moments on paid traffic. This is where we go to pay to play. But um, there's some cool things that you can do here. The first one is retargeting. Now, retargeting, you might have experienced this if you don't know what this is about. But you guys know when you are looking at a pair of shoes on some retailer's website, next thing you're on Facebook and you're like, hey, they're those shoes. They're, they're kind of like following you around the internet. And this is classic retargeting. It's kind of cheap. It's cheaper than other methods. And the conversion is really, really good. So it's, it's worthwhile turning on. All that means is that you have to have set up your Facebook pixel, your meta pixel on your website. And that means that when somebody comes to your site, Meta is going to be like, hey, here's this person that visited the site and it allows you to, uh, to track the activity. But more importantly, from my point of view, is you can then engage with them with uh, retargeting to follow them around the internet. So if they looked at a product on your site and they go and look at other websites, if that site allows, then it'll show some retargeting ads. It will show your ad, which is awesome because that can lead to more sales. The other thing that we can do here in terms of paid is to build your database. Building your email list is something that people often question me like, Warwick, why is building your email list in the paid section? Because building your email list is free, right? No. Well, it, it can be. <laughs> it can be, but this should be something that you invest in, that you pay for, that you drive traffic to your lead generators, to your email opt-ins, that you build your subscription list. Because something that I teach my premium students is that the future growth of your business is determined by the current growth of your email list. Growing your email list and your database means that you've got more people to sell to in the future. And somebody who's bought from you today is far more likely to buy from you again in the future. It's also cheaper to buy or to sell to, to people who've bought from you in the past, right? And you can do that by building your database and investing in it. 
when we're going back to the concept of meta advertising or even Google ads these days, um, there's a concept called lookalike audiences. And this we can use once we've had some good traffic on our website, because that pixel that we have um, tracking people's activity on our site, we can start to gather information about these people. Um, we actually don't have the information because of Poppy, the Poppy Act, the privacy requirements, which is fine, but the pixel tracks these people. And eventually when you've had a bit of traffic on your site, you can go to Meta and you can say, look, I wanna create an advertising campaign and I wanna show it to either the people that have been on my site or we can reach new people that look similar to the people who have been on my site. This is lookalike audiences. So we can create an audience of people who are similar to the people who have been to my site, who have shopped on my site, or who have done a specific action on my site. And this means that you can start to go and show your adverts to people who are similar to the people who have bought from you in the past. And Meta is actually flipping good at, at doing exactly that. Like they know so much about each and every one of us. It's a little bit scary, unless if you are the digital marketer that is taking advantage of that and using that to your advantage. So you can use it by using lookalike audiences. And let's not forget to mention our good old friends at Google. Google ads used to be called AdWords. These are those paid ads that you see at the top of the listing at the search engine um, pages when you Google for anything. Those top two or three uh, listings, those are adverts, those are paid for. And this is Google ads. Now, when you are getting started, it is tempting to go and throw all your money at Meta, Facebook, Instagram, at, uh, at, at anything there. Social media marketing is fantastic. But if we think about it, we know that people are more, um, they have higher purchasing intent when they are seeing Google ads. Because when they're on social media, the ads that are shown to them are based on who they are, lookalike audiences and, and the audiences that you create, right? So you're taking, I don't know, let's think of a random example. Like you're taking a fishing rod, you're selling some fishing gear. You go to Facebook and you say, let me create an audience of people who like fishing. Great, let me show it to them. Now, this person, the person who's receiving the ad, they are just browsing around Facebook or Instagram. They are doing their thing. They're living their life and they're checking what their friends did on the weekend and they see your ad. They are not in a mode to buy, but you are able to get them into the awareness. Now, they see your product. Hopefully, they're going to click through to your site. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But the thing is that that person is not showing intent to purchase right now. However, if that same person goes to their computer and they go to Google and they type in uh Online fishing stores near me, uh, on, online fishing stores, whatever. Um, I don't know. I should have thought of a different example, but online fishing stores. I need to buy a fishing rod. Then um, that is intent. They are looking for an online store which they can shop from. And that intent is served to them by showing them Google ads. And so you definitely don't want to ignore Google ads. And in fact, when you're starting out, whatever budget you have, my recommendation would be to divide your budget 60% of Google ads and 40% in terms uh, to meta advertising, to social media marketing. Now, that's where you're going to start from as a rule of thumb, as a starting point. But moving forward, you got to read your, your stats, check your analytics, see what sales you're getting, see where your sales are coming from, and then adjust from there. But start with Google ads, 60% and meta or social media marketing at 40%. And as a quick action item, because I love giving action items, don't forget to set up your Facebook pixel. As soon as your website is live, Go and register with the Meta Business Manager, get your pixel, put it on your site because you don't want to do this later. You want to do this really early on so that it can start to track who's visiting your site. What are they doing? How are they engaging? Did they buy? Did they not buy? Because as that information gathers, it allows you to use that information to create audiences for retargeting and for proactive advertising. And if you don't do that now and you only do it in six months, then you have lost six months worth of time that you could have been using to build that audience based on people visiting your site. So let's jump into fifth section, delivering these orders. Now that we have gone through the process of finding a great product, putting it on a website, getting payments up and running, turning on our site, um, learning how to get sales. And now we get a sale, like what do we do? And this is often a big challenge. This is one of the challenges where people often get it wrong. So let's look at things that you can do in terms of getting it right. First up, which careers should you be choosing? Oh, this is a big question. Um, everybody loves to hate every single career. There, there is so much, um, so many people who um, love the career guy, for example, or who love RAM or who love DPD laser or who love this and other people who will just say that they're the worst. Now, the thing is that um, there's, a, there's an interesting situation going on here because as an entrepreneur, you can imagine like you do all the work, you go and invest in a product, you build a site, 
you do your marketing, you get a customer, they make a sale, they give you their money. Oh my goodness, happy days, little get your happy dance done. Then you pack up their parcel and you maybe you write a little love note in there. You say, thank you so much for buying from me. And you package it up, you seal up that box and you hand it over to the courier. And when that courier walks out the door, you are just praying that they are going to deliver your parcel to the customer. Like you are putting your whole reputation inside the hands of that courier driver. And so when that gets when they get it wrong, you can now understand why there are so many people who kind of hate this company or love that company because it is a, it's an emotional thing. They are representing your company. So when it comes time to like choosing a career, my recommendations are, you know, the career guy, they are focused on e-commerce, on SMEs. So when you're starting out, that is a great option to go for. Fastway is also a really good cheap alternative that you can look at. Ram, they are, Ram's amazing. They're just expensive. MDS delivery, also amazing, but expensive. So if you're looking for different levels of, um, you know, fast way, you pay very little, but they're not always that reliable. Career guys in the middle, RAM and MDS delivery uh, are at the top. So you can kind of choose the one that suits you. We can also consider using aggregator services. Now, well, what does that mean? An aggregator is a company that offers kind of like an interface between you and the careers, and they are managing it on your behalf. Now, this is really cool because the aggregators plug into your website. They integrate into your website if you're using platforms like WordPress or Shopify, right? The integration is already made, so you can just access it. And um, again, this is why I recommend Shopify or WordPress because these things are already created. They're already available to you. You don't have to pay a developer to build them for you. So now this aggregator service, when your website gets a confirmed order, you don't actually have to go and book in the Weibull with the courier and write it out or copy paste or try and get the information right. It pulls the information from that customer's order and it pushes it through to the aggregator. Now, some good options to consider is um, UAfrica, which has now changed. Its brand is now Bob Go, part of the Bob Group uh, with Bid or Buy and other companies. So Bob Go is a great aggregator. Another one is the M24 Logistics, owned by Media24, owned by Naspers. Also a great option for you to be looking at. And you can connect these into your website. And then as orders come in, it just pushes it through to that system there's no room for human error of getting the address wrong because you're taking the address straight from the order. And what's really cool is that these aggregators often negotiate better prices on your behalf. So you can actually save money by paying to use the service. It's really cool. So check it out. Another option is to outsource your warehousing because yes, there are warehouses made specifically for e-commerce companies. I've used them myself. This means that when your supplier sends you products, they don't actually send it to you. They send it to your warehouse, some random warehouse. Those guys receive it, open the box, check it's correct. They put it on the shelf. And then when you get orders, they pick, pack, and dispatch to your customer. The customer gets updates and it works like a dream. There is obviously cost involved in having this as a service, but it makes life way easier because it lets you just focus on the cool stuff, like your digital marketing, getting traffic, getting sales, getting new products. So this is a really cool option. It's kind of expensive, but it frees you up to do more business growth. And the action item here is that if you are using one of these aggregators, they often give you a, your first delivery is free, which is cool. So you can register an account and get a feel for it. Like send a, send a box through to, to your family member somewhere else in the country. And you can do that for free, actually. So that's a nice way to get started. And as we kind of look at the recap, what we've spoken about is finding a product, choosing the right website platform, setting up payments, super easy, getting your first couple of sales and then delivering those sales. And one thing I always need to just touch on is that before getting traffic to your site, it's very important that we optimize our site to turn more of our visitors into paying customers. Now that concept is called conversion rate optimization. And I don't have enough time to dive into that topic right now, but I did say that there's two bonuses for you guys here today. Now the first bonus is if you wanna book a one-on-one -on -one with me as a coach on e-commerce through the Startwise platform, then that is the link. Now that's it, then my time is up here for, with you guys here today. So I thank you for joining me in this e-commerce chat. I hope that you will book a consult with me through Startwise. Also, just before this Zoom wraps up, please do write down the link at the bottom of the screen, which is nsaka.coza forward slash five, because that's where you can get free training where I will show you step-by-step -step how to build your own website and how to do that correctly. So if you want to learn more about that from me, then go ahead and click that link. Or can't click it, but write it down. Go and visit that link and I'll see you guys in, inside that training or I'll catch you in a one-on-one -on -one through the Startwise platform. That's it from me. Let's wrap up today. Let's close this off. Thank you for joining. I'll see you inside my training at Insaka sometime soon. Cheers for now, everybody.